All righty, on uh, the air with us right now, we've got uh, Rick Springfield, of course, uh, Grammy-winning musician, author, and actor. How are you this morning? I'm good. Well, Rick, are you looking forward to coming to Amarillo on Friday? I'm always looking forward to playing. Awesome. So uh, what can our, our listeners expect to see this Friday at the show? <laughs> uh, me. Well, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> me and my band. Uh, to, I have a great band, and they, they, they kick butt, and uh, it's a loud and sweaty show, and it will send everyone away hot and happy. Awesome. Well, that sounds like it's going to be a fun, fun night. And, of course, uh, I know uh, recently you uh, just starred in uh, Ricky and the Flash with Meryl Streep. How how did that happen? What made you decide to do that movie? Well, you know, I, I read for it, and they liked uh, what I brought to the character. And um, there's great people involved, certainly Jonathan Demme and Meryl Streep were, you know, top of the food chain. So it was uh, one of those things I couldn't, an offer I couldn't refuse. So did you have to teach Meryl uh, any tricks to uh, the whole uh, music scene? Yeah, yeah I, I gave her a couple of tips. You know, she was only when she asked, she's, uh, she just wanted it to look authentic, you know, and, and I would ask a couple of things about how what, what looked the most authentic as far as what, what a, you know, a full-time musician would do. But uh, it's all just part of her making the character as believable as possible, which she's uh, a master at. So when it comes to the different things you've you've done, like uh, acting and writing, and of course your music, what do you just love them all equally, or do you love one more than the other? I love the one that I'm doing right now. You know, it's uh, kind of that. It all comes in the same place, and whichever one I'm involved in, that's the one I love the most. I'm fickle. Well, you've got a wide variety of things to do, and that's always great. So, uh, what do you think about how the face of music has changed since recording Jesse's Girl till now and the challenges you face as an artist in today's music world? Um, well, it's always, you know, the music business has changed pretty dramatically, but uh, there's still great music out there. I'm, I have a new record coming out in uh, February, my 18th record, and, you know, it's, 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 it's much more... Um, I mean, the, the 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 radio picked Jesse's Girl to be a hit. It wasn't uh, the record company. So, and that that couldn't happen today, you know. And now radio just gets their really tight playlists, and they aren't allowed to uh, to throw on something that they just like, which was kind of the, the the great thing about radio and music back back when they used to do that, because magic could happen, you know. But magic can still happen now. It's just uh, um, it's got to be you know a couple of million dollars behind it. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, and I've had several of our listeners want to know, when is the sequel to Magnificent Vibration coming out? I'm working on that now uh, while I'm on the road. I just uh, that's going to be ready when it's ready. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, I also ask listeners to send in their questions uh, as well. And Lisa wants to know, what do you like to listen to? Uh, what's on your playlist uh, that you listen to just to kick back and relax? What kind of music? Yes. Oh, I listen to everything. I, I uh I've always had a really wide view of uh, of, of music, and uh, I listen as much as with for homework as anything else. But um, I tend to go towards the kind of the more adventurous stuff, like Porcupine Tree, or uh, you know, um, something with that, that challenges. Um, but I'll, you know, I also still have the Beatles in rotation, so I listen to everything. Ah, you can't go wrong with the Beatles. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, also one of our listeners wants to know, uh, will Dr. Noah Drake return to General Hospital anytime soon? Uh, no, I wouldn't think soon. You know, I mean, I'd never say never because I, I owe them a lot. But I went back to the 50th anniversary and uh, for a couple of weeks, and uh, uh, I'm just kind of busy, really busy right now with other stuff. And it's, it's very time-consuming. Soap operas are, are the hardest uh, acting gig in the world and uh, the hardest writing gig, the hardest producing gig, and the hardest directing gig. So... It's it's very time consuming, and uh, um, I, I honestly don't have the time right now. But you know, I mean, you never know. I mean, I I certainly owe that the show a lot. Well, I know you said you have your new album coming out. Uh, any upcoming movies you're going to be working on? Um, yeah, there's there's stuff I'm meeting uh, with na- meeting on now. I can't nothing I can really talk about. But yeah, there will be stuff coming out. Well, uh, I'm sure all your fans out there are, are so looking forward to that. And of course, uh, all the fans in Amarillo are so looking forward to having you here on Friday night. I'm looking forward to it too. That's always my band. <laughs> well, Rick, thank you so much for taking the time uh, today with us. I know uh, your voice, you got to keep it rested. So uh, we appreciate you calling in and, and talking with us for a few minutes. You're very welcome.